so uh, coming on to the asset base balance without mentioning you yourself know that how much important this topic is not only in your physiology but also with your medicine isn't it so one of the high yielding topics acid base balance which comes as clinical questions which come as calculation based questions and we should be able to solve it nicely first basic thing is understanding it conceptually right so remember that when we speak of the acid base balance for every h plus ion that is secreted from the kidneys there is a reabsorption of bicarbonates there is no problem going on we have seen that there is the sodium bicarbonate co-transporter in the pct which is coupled with the sodium hydrogen exchanger and if you remember we had said that this was the way where there was indirect reabsorption of bicarbonates in the pct but this you know even if the pct is secreting the h plus ions it is not able to bring about an acidic ph right the acidic ph or the limiting ph of the urine which is around 4.5 will be brought about only by the intercalated cells in the collecting ducts which have got special hydrogen atps pump bearing cells those cells which are secreting hydrogen are actually responsible for your acidic ph now when you speak of the acid base balance you should always have one data with you what is that data the normal blood gas analysis or the normal values like how much is the normal ph how much is the normal ph how much is the normal partial pressure of carbon dioxide how much is the normal bicarbonates so unless and until you know these three values how are you going to tell whether it is falling in category of acidosis falling in, uh, falling in the category of alkalosis so the normal ph which we say is around 7.35 to 7.45 you know in physiology we always speak of a range and never one particular value better is always to speak of a range pco2 is between 35 to 42 mmhg and the bicarbonates 24 we take as the value so the range is between 22 to 26 right so these are the values which i should have with myself before i'm speaking or before i am learning the acid base balance right now i should know that what are the different buffers which are present the first line of buffer is right the first line of buffer is are the buffers which are present in the body fluids right the buffers which are present in the body fluids right so they are going to immediately buffer the h plus ions so the first line of buffers are going to be the body fluid buffers the second line of defense is your respiratory system respiratory system because you know that carbon dioxide is a volatile acid remember this word carbon dioxide is a volatile acid right forming carbonic acid which again dissociates into carbon dioxide and we are going to exhale it out so the second line of defense becomes our respiratory system however the final or the third line of defense which is actually the permanent solution to the acid base disorders which is a permanent solution are going to be your kidneys so you can say that the respiratory system is working fast like a rabbit right but the tortoise that is the kidneys are the permanent slow to act but the permanent remedy will be provided only by the kidneys what are the dif different buffers which are present like you can say there are blood buffers there are buffers which are in the icf buffers which are in the kidney so for any of the buffer uh, should be act able to act as an efficient buffer 
it is acting as an efficient buffer if its disassociation constant that is the pk is close to the ph of that uh, fluid for example bicarbonate buffer bicarbonate buffer is a buffer which is a very important ecf buffer having its disassociation constant not very much close but almost close to that in the uh, ph of the ecf and if you consider the phosphate buffer phosphate buffer is not a good buffer in the ecf phosphate buffers are a best buffers in the icf especially in the kidneys because we've seen that in the proximal tubules there is not much significant reabsorption of the phosphates and therefore the phosphate concentration will keep on increasing distally where these phosphate buffers have their disassociation constant almost very much near to the ph of the tubular fluid so because their pk is very much similar or closer to the ph of the tubular fluid in the distal tubules they are very very efficient buffer and finally you have got your ammonia buffer whenever there is chronic acidosis okay whenever there is chronic acidosis the important buffer that comes into role is the ammonia buffer right so when it is chronic acidosis the important buffer or the main buffer becomes the ammonia buffer now when we learn uh, when we learn we will be hearing certain terms like what is new bicarbonate generation there is something which is called as new bicarbonate generation and i will be showing you how that new bicarbonate is generated so normally the bicarbonate which is generated is the indirect reabsorption of bicarbonate in the pct which is coupled with the uh, exchanger that is the sodium hydrogen exchanger that we have considered already in the pct but if there is more and more of acidosis then what will happen the bicarbonate buffer alone will not be efficient in that case we will have to generate new bicarbonates those new bicarbonates are generated by different buffers that is your ammonia buffer and phosphate buffer right so what is new bicarbonate regeneration the only bicarbonate normally which we see is in the pct which is getting reabsorbed but when the h plus ions are more than those bicarbonates that means more than the amount of the normal bicarbonates that are reabsorbed we will now have to generate new bicarbonates with the help of other buffers and those are the ammonia and the phosphate buffers which will generate new bicarbonate so the more the bicarbonate reabsorption more is going to be the hydrogen secretion by these new bicarbonates which are generated by the two different buffers that is ammonia and your phosphate buffer right now what is the important buffer in the icf so in the icf the very important buffers are the proteins and your phosphate proteins and the phosphate if you look into the concentration you will see that the concentration of the phosphates in the icf inside the cell is more than the proteins but if you look into the efficiency the proteins are more efficient buffer than the phosphate buffers right then you have got the buffers which are in the ecf that is most important ecf buffer is your bicarbonate buffer most important ecf buffer is the bicarbonate buffer again the disassociation constant is nearby or such that it is very much efficiently working in the ecf others are your hemoglobin your proteins right they are important buffers so remember the important buffers which are present so before we start with the topic of acid base balance these are the important things which you should understand and all of us are aware of uh, uh, acquainted with the henderson hasselbalch equation which we are going to use while we are studying and while we are understanding the uh, acid base disorders